In previous videos, we introduced molecular geometry and how lone electron pairs affect the shape of molecules. While second row elements can only have a maximum steric number of 4, elements in the third row and below in the periodic table can have steric numbers of up to 6. Let's investigate an example of this. Let's take a look at phosphorus pentachloride. This is its Lewis structure. What is the steric number of the phosphorus in PCl5? If we look at the Lewis structure we drew, we see that the phosphorus atom has five things attached to it. In this case, there are five atoms and no electron pairs. So in AXE notation, we would just write this as AX5. Anything that is AX5 takes on the trigonal bipyramidal shape, and it looks kind of like this. In this molecule, there are two types of chlorines. Imagine that the phosphorus is at the center of Earth. Two of the chlorines would be at the two poles, one on top at the north pole and one on the bottom at the south pole. These are the two axial chlorines. There are also three chlorines around the equator of our planetary molecule. They are found sticking out from the central atom like this. These three chlorines are the equatorial chlorines. Let's remove the globe image. This is our trigonal bipyramidal PCL5 molecule. There are two different chlorine-phosphorus-chlorine bond angles in this molecule. One is between the axial chlorines and the chlorines around the equator. What do you predict is the angle between the axial chlorines and the chlorines in the equator? There is a 90 degree angle between the axial chlorines and the plane made by the equator and the chlorines in that plane. What do you predict is the chlorine-phosphorus-chlorine bond angle for the equatorial chlorines? If we ignore the two axial chlorines, this kind of reminds us of the trigonal planar shape that we learned about in the previous video. For the trigonal planar shape, we learned that there is a 120 degree angle between each molecule. The same is true here. Between each equatorial chlorine, there is a 120 degree angle. Now let's hypothetically say that we replace this chlorine with a lone electron pair. In AXE notation, this new molecule would be AX4E1. What do you predict? Will the lone pair be axial or equatorial? Well, it does matter where we put the lone pair electrons. Since they take up more space, we want them as far away from the atoms as possible. If we were to put the lone electron pair at an axial position, then it would be 90 degrees from the three chlorine atoms. But if we put the lone electron pair at an equatorial position, it would only be 90 degrees from two chlorine atoms. That's less electron repulsion and more stable. So we would get this shape, which kind of looks like a seesaw if you rotate it like this and put some people on it. So what do we predict about the XAX bond angles in a seesaw molecule? The lone electron pair takes up more space and so it pushes the other atoms away from itself and towards each other. The same is true here. Trigonal pyramidal molecules have 90 degree and 120 degree bond angles. In seesaw shaped molecules, those angles are a little less than 90 degrees and a little less than 120 degrees.